All right, so let me just quickly X out of here and we'll jump into my shipping machine. So real quick, what I have it open, I was earlier discussing about those mapping fields. So this is really, I just wanted to show this, how simple it is that we data map these fields where we don't have to get into programming. So for example, for carrier service, here's Starship, it's showing me, here are all your ship vias inside of Acumatica. And then being a ship via field, we can do data translations and tell Starship, you know, hey, UPS ground equals UPS ground. Um, and again, like I said, we can automate third party where we can tell, okay, if it's UPS G third party, automatically change it to UPS ground and the billing type is gonna be third party, okay? But that's how simple we uh, connect or data map into Acumatica. And again, here's just all those fields I have available that Starship sees living inside of Acumatica. So I'm just gonna quickly close this and we'll bring in a shipment. So I'm just gonna click rate and ship. And here's the main Starship screen. So as a shipper, technically I can just work inside a Starship. I don't need uh, Acumatica open. Um, uh, now from here, again, we can go sales order or shipment. Uh, just know if we wanna pull by sales order number on right back, Starship would actually automatically create the shipment record. Uh, most clients, they do pull by the shipment record. And up top is our source information field. So this is where as a shipper, I can manually type in, in this case, the shipment number. If it's barcoded, I can even use just a regular wedge type plug and play barcode scanner and scan in that, have Starship automatically load the order or the shipment. Um, also down below, manual lookup, where I can manually look up any of my shipments. Again, these are a live connection. So as we're adding shipments or sales orders, can automatically be picking those up. Um, so from here, I'm just going to quickly grab, uh, we'll just grab an international shipment real fast here and just click the little truck icon. Starship simply going to load all my shipping information. So here's my source company, my sender. We do fully support blind drop shipments where we could change this and have Starship automatically say, oh, maybe it's coming from Home Depot. Uh, so we do support that recipient mapping in the ship to um, address validation. We do validate zip plus four. And then, of course, transportation, simply looking at your ship via codes, and those are what telling Starship carrier service, billing, account information. Um, in a live environment, really packaging is where I'm going to probably be doing most of my work um, because this is where I can actually build that item to box detail or, again, if it's LPL, item to box pallet detail. Now, if you're using a WMS or manually building the item box detail inside of Acumatica on the shipment record, just know that's how it's gonna flow into Starship. So if I'm using that WMS and I define a shipment with two items in say like this Acer box and maybe one item in a small box, again, that's how it's gonna flow into a Starship. So really as a shipper now, I don't have to worry about doing item to box detail. But a lot of our clients that aren't using a WMS, uh, they actually just manually build the shipment inside of Starship. A lot of them find it, it is easier than doing it inside of Acumatica because it is really just dragging and dropping. Now, also Starship does support uh, packaging scenarios. So in this case here, it knows, hey, they're shipping an Acer laptop. Every time they ship it, they always put it in a package called Acer. So it's automatically packaged it for me. All right, so those are just options. Unfortunately, with those packaging scenarios, it is one item to one type of box or multiple uh, boxes. Unfortunately, we can't do things like, hey, a laptop and a, uh, a motherboard and a laptop fit in an Acer laptop. Kind of designed it more for case packs because you can also do quantity breaks. But as I mentioned, if I wanna move items around, uh, I can simply drag and drop. So here, motherboard, I know that fits in that Acer laptop box as well. If I need to add additional packages, I can simply click this icon. We also have repeat box functions where I can tell Starship, hey, you know, I need 10 boxes, have it automatically load those. And then packaging this database is just where Starship, you could set up and store different type of uh, package IDs or as Acumatica calls them, box IDs. Uh, so here I just have, I'll just select small. And the nice thing with using the packaging database is Starship would automatically populate the dimensions once they're set up. Uh, because of course, the dimensional weight nowadays is a big deal and Starship will also do dimensional calculations. So for example, here with the actual weights, I'm actually pulling those from inside of Acumatica. But if I had a scale that was integrated, as you see, I could put this on a scale, have Starship automatically return the weight 
or manually type in the weight as well. Um, but next door, Starship is always going to do the correct dimensional calculation based on the carrier selected up above. And in this case here, because we have some differences, uh, it is now rate shopping. And when we process this shipment, it will go to the carrier at the correct dimensional weight. Okay, so you don't have to worry about those correction fees later on. Um, Starship's automatically going to do that every time for you. All right. And then even quantities, uh, if we wanted to, we could allow our shippers, say, to back order items. You know, maybe our inventory was off and we, I only had maybe you know, one out of two laptops if I was shipping to. Uh, but just know on right back, Starship is always going to update Acumatica with, in that case, hey, they only shipped one out of two of those laptops. So again, usually packaging is where our shipper really works inside of Starship because everything else is going to be set up to be automatically selected, even including our shipping options. So we, we could trigger these from Acumatica, even default them as well. Uh, so a lot of different options there. And then usually the, the last spot a shipper would go to is this rate quoting. So I simply scroll down here and this is where I'm going to see my live uh, contract rates with each of my carriers. And of course, with small parcel, we also see published list rates. I'm going to see business days, total days, the ETA. Um, applied charge in Starship terms is simply plus or minus any freight rules. So if anyone needs to do maybe free shipping over X amount of dollars or, hey, let's add a flat rate of $3 because this item is oversized or whatever the case may be, uh, Starship can automatically calculate those freight rules. And applied is what we're going to write back into Acumatica. So usually what we want to charge the customer. Right. Um, also with the rating that can be automated, you know, we can do best way shipping where Starship automatically selects the say least expensive carrier service or maybe even least amount of uh, delivery days. Right. But once I am ready to process a shipment, I can either click this ship and process button up top under the shipment. We have shortcut keys. We can save shipments, create return labels. You know, maybe we want to stage a shipment or we needed to include a return label with the original shipment. Uh, Starship can most certainly handle that as well. But once a shipper clicks ship and process in a live environment, right now Starship would just be printing out my shipping documents. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I PDF everything, so it does take a moment for it to pop all those PDFs. And then because I don't have a thermal printer, this document is what we call our smart label. As you see, simply prints a shipping label packing list together. You know, this usually goes to a laser printer, but it's just an option. Of course, we can send your shipping labels to your thermal printer or printers. We can tell Starship where each document gets printed. 